I asked, fans answered. Now they ask and I answer. I'll tell you what I'm talking about on this edition of Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me here on the Locked On Jaguars podcast. I am the host, Tony Wiggins, of the Daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. A quick reminder, we are free to subscribe to on our YouTube page that is Locked On Jaguars on YouTube. Hit the bell. Make sure you hit that like button. Also, hit the bell for notifications. And if you listen to audio podcasts, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you tap in every single day to make sure you don't miss an episode. Shout out to the everydayers that make us who we are, that listen to the Locked on Jaguars podcast every single day. I appreciate you and any new listeners. Make sure you remember, if you like the content, tap in and join us here every single day. Listen, man, I I like to involve those that interact with me a lot on social media. I like to involve the fans in in programming sometimes i i got a couple of um i got a couple of listeners that that actually believe they are my program director you know i got people who give me advice and tell me all the time what i should and shouldn't be doing i appreciate it but today i'm gonna reciprocate that a little bit today's show is about q and a uh from the fans i actually read some of the questions to you that i um that i got Uh, So I asked the fans for questions. They answered with questions themselves that I've sort of put them all together here a little bit and and kind of blended them together in order to create a a show that really flows the right way. But hopefully, you know, if your question isn't directly answered, it will be answered indirectly and you'll get the point. So one of the three topics I've come up with today is uh, who gets extended first? after Trevor Lawrence. That's at the end of this season, of course, going into next season. What's amazing about that, before I even answer that part, is, well, well, let me get to this. Slot corner competition in in segment two, and then the expectations for Ventro Miller, the rookie linebacker. So let's get back to who gets extended first after Trevor. It's fascinating to me, without even answering that question, uh, that the question exists and that is because that means people understand that it's more uh, to building this team and it's more to having a sustained effort every single year than just one player. You just can't get Trevor Lawrence and get out of the way. And the other part of it is there actually uh, there's actually people that want this group to stay together. Now I know in the past, sometimes Folks want everybody to stay, but I used to criticize people for wanting everybody to stay from a bad team or a, a, an average team. Now, this appears to be a good team, and fans are wondering how we're going to keep everybody, you know? And I think with success, that's usually what will happen. Uh, when you have success, uh, it's going to be impossible to keep your entire team together. That's why drafting and developing is still so critical. Uh, especially when you start getting these higher, higher salaries. So uh, by the end of this first segment and into the second segment, I'm going to give you guys an idea of who I believe um, has the opportunity or has the shot to uh, get an extension after Trevor Lawrence. Of course, a lot of that will be based on what happens this year. Um, A lot will be based on whatever they spent trying to – acquire people through trades or free agency. A lot of it will depend on what they have behind them. Remember, Juwan Taylor this past season, this past offseason, got a little bit too expensive for the Jaguars' blood, and they didn't have to be desperate and overpay him. You know why? Because they thought they had Cam Robinson healthy, and they thought they had Walker Little, and they still believe in Walker Little, but then they had a high draft pick. And it turns out that they were picking in the hot spot where they wanted to be, where 
a lot of offensive linemen were, and they got their guy named Anton Harrison. So that was prior to Cam Robinson having a quote unquote issue with the NFL where he might or might not be suspended, but still it just goes to show you what goes into the thinking of a franchise. If that franchise has depth and uh, they're unwilling to uh, go beyond their threshold for what they want to pay someone. So the obvious answer is going to be somewhere between either Evan Ingram because he's on a franchise uh, deal this year. I, I, I don't necessarily know if they're going to get to a long-term deal. If they get to a long-term deal, obviously he's off the table. And we're assuming that Trevor Lawrence, while it might not chronologically come first, the priority is, is to get a contract extension for Trevor Lawrence as soon as you can. I expect Justin Herbert and, and Joe Burrow to be done this year. And then the Jaguars can turn around and start working on uh, it with Trevor Lawrence after his third season. So don't think for one minute that those conversations internally haven't started turning to the point where they have an idea of where they're going to have to go and what area they're going to have to sit in uh, money-wise, monetarily, in order to um, be able to retain a great quarterback like Trevor. So we're just going to assume that Trevor gets this deal or that any deal that the Jaguars do, even if before Trevor, is with the thought that there's room to, to, to make a deal for Trevor Lawrence. Um, the candidates for who will get signed first would be, if he's not on a long-term deal, tight end Evan Ingram, Calvin Ridley, any guy going into his fourth season that was not a first-round draft pick. So Trevor was going into his fourth season. It would be going into his fourth season. And Travis Etienne would be going into his fourth season. Um, they, they would be guys that would be under contract, and if the fifth-year option is picked up for an extra season. So technically, the Jaguars don't have to do anything for two years. So we're going to take ETN off. We're going to see if they can get Trevor done, or if they would probably get Trevor done after year three in year four so they don't get to the fifth-year option. And maybe by doing it early, save a few dollars. If you don't, you don't. You just go ahead and do it. Um, Josh Allen will, will, will have played through his – fifth year option walk a little we'll be going into his fourth year do you try to do it early or do you wait right um tyson campbell that i mentioned tyson campbell tyson campbell will be going into his fourth year andre cisco going into his some of those guys will probably play through those seasons and at some point the jaguars may try to do something to keep them off the market but that's a great question because they have a lot of work to do for the sake of the show, I'm going to name somebody. I'm going to name the person that I think gets done first. I think it's going to be tight. Out of all those people I just named, I think the first one to get signed is Tyson Campbell. That's what I would do. Assuming that he's going to have a big year. Get more of them done, and then you can use your tags at the end of the year if you have two guys left that are going to hit free agency, you can still use your transition and your franchise tag. So some of these guys have to be done, I believe, uh, during uh, year four of their contract early to not play those contracts out because that would be too many guys hitting free. This is what happens, man, when you draft well. They did Devon Hamilton already, but this is what happens when you draft well in one season and then you have some success. You're going to have to make a way or find a way to get players under contract for long term. You remember that's how we always talk. We always talked about that. Getting guys under contract long term so you can finally see that project elevate to where you want it to go. Talk about more here in uh we'll talk about the slot corner. Speaking of Tyson Campbell, he's not a slot, but uh they do need a slot corner and a nickel corner. We'll discuss that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. After I let you know that today's sponsor is FanDuel. Baseball is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. 
That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to join today. Now make sure you read up on all that baseball stuff because you need to know pitching, rotations, ERAs, and all of that stuff, and FanDuel will help you out. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat. First bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel is an official sports partner of Major League Baseball. Always glad to have you here on Locked on Jaguars answering fans' questions today. Pardon my little bit of a raspy voice, but somehow I woke up and my voice didn't work like it always does. But we're here and we're good to go. Make sure you check out your next watch, which is the Locked on NFL Today podcast, which is daily here on the Locked On Podcast Network and make that your second listen as well. Um, slot corner competition. The Somebody asked me, uh, how come the Jaguars love uh, Herndon so much, the, the, the guy who, who's been the backup in a slot here, Trey Herndon. Why do they love him so much, man? Why do they love him more than the fans? I have no idea because they love him more than this host too. But if I had to guess, and I wouldn't know this answer, I think somebody like D.J. Townsend stands on the table for him because he likes the way he works. The part, a lot of part of this, the, a big part of this that we don't see that w- when we sit and try to make evaluations is we don't see a guy's workflow. We don't see how he is in the building, how he is with um, with the rest of the players, how he does in film study. Um, what type of guy he is. And and I think when you are a super, super professional person who has some starts under your belt, you practice well, it's hard for a coach to cut guys like that unless you have a replacement. You're not just going to get rid of a dude hoping that somebody replaces somebody comes to, I I guarantee you anybody that's just average, those coaches down there want somebody to come in there and beat them out. It ain't happened yet. It has not happened. So when it hasn't happened, it is easy to fall in love with somebody that just works and works and works and is a consummate pro, consummate pro. I don't know if that's the case, but it seems like to me when you see guys, I, Tyler Shatley is another one. I always joke that Tyler Shatley is going to be on this team in 2050. Tyler Shatley is going to make a whole bunch of money in the NFL but he's going to make it a little bit at a time, right? Every every year, $2 million, $2 million. He's going to be on the team forever. But it goes. he's also probably one of the strongest people on the team. It's that work, man, that professionalism. We, have to, we always have to remember, it. while it's a gladiator sport and there's a lot of competition, football is also about it's a job. It's a multi-billion dollar corporation. And one thing that guys who are supervisors like They obviously like production, but they really, really, really like guys that they can count on that come to work every day, especially when you have like 53 people and you're trying to blend them and mix them together. It is something else, man. So I imagine that in a well-run organization, they, they probably really, they really value people that are pros. They, they bring their lunch pail and they come in every day. Those guys are good to have on the team, but I know you want to fix it. You might be able to fix it with a, a younger player. I saw some of the young guys out there. I get my roster. Let me see if I can find it. But I saw some young players out there. Yeah, they really, really did intrigue me. But they were in shorts. They were in shorts. You, you can never really tell um, what a guy's going to do. Greg Jr. was there. Uh, in the camp, number 34, and you guys will see them all. I tell you, it looks good. Christian Braswell, the rookie out of Rutgers. And Rutgers head coach, Greg Schiano. I think Greg Schiano always does a good job putting out those DBs and guys on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, Eric Hallett from Pittsburgh, Eric Hallett the second. Talk about good coaching. They got real good coaching up at Pitt. And if you notice, they put a lot of guys in the NFL. A lot of them are defensive linemen, though, because of Charlie Partridge, who's one of the probably one of the best defensive line coaches in the world. But 
Yeah, and Trey Herndon's still right there. One of them, 5'11", 190, six year out of Vanderbilt. So you know the kid's smart. See, when you know he goes to Vanderbilt, now it starts to line up with why they love him so much. Somebody has to emerge. I was wondering if Clay Brooks could do it because he's one of the fastest guys on the team. And, it, you know, his size suggests that he'll be good at it. He's 5'9", about 180. I thought he was a little taller than that. Maybe it's the dreadlocks, but he doesn't look like a real small guy. But can he do it? Clay Brooks is in his third year out of Memphis. Or will it be one of those safeties? Latavius Brenny, rookie, played in the SEC out of Arkansas. Could he be an inside player? They've already said that Antonio Johnson, even though he's a nickel, he ain't a slot guy. Or if he, well, they said he's a slot, he's not a nickel corner. Like he ain't gonna be guarding uh, these slot receivers. He's like a big nickel dude. He'd probably be guarding tight end. So they have some, they have some choices. Just I hope they just realize that um Darius Williams is an outside corner, even though he's 5'9, 187. He played better outside. The tape didn't lie. He played better outside when he was in LA than he did inside. It took him what five, six games last year to realize his best option was going back outside. So hopefully they get that fixed up and they get it lined up. But I just named some people for you. I'll tell you what they didn't do. They didn't go out in free agency and sign a veteran. That's what I thought they were going to do. Somebody that they saw on tape that they knew could play the nickel position. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. So we've had one question in about 2024 already. And I'm still giddy about that. And now we have um, – the last question, which is on uh, slot corners, is about this year. So what is it going to be in, in segment three? It's going to be about this year again. But I'll tell you why it's about both. Because it's about it's about Ventrell Miller and where he is right now. I think Ventrell Miller is is is, is good. He's solid. I think he has a, a radar on him. But I'll tell you why you won't see most of it until 2024. How about that? So we got a question that is about 2023, but an answer that's going to be about 2024. I'll tell you about all of that stuff in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. All right, third and final segment here on Locked on Jaguars. The question is, about Ventrell Miller. Let me let me give some shout outs too, because I promised people when they sent these questioning questions in that I would give shout outs. So the court QA of the day is ask away and I'll give you a shout out if your question was chosen. Oh, I got 11, 12 people. Chris from the West Side, what's up? He's always asking uh, asking good questions. He asked something about the turf that Smooth called uh Dewan Smoot called out at MetLife and uh I ain't got too much worry about that. Uh, how how soon the start of it? This is the Ventrell Miller question from Ronald. Josh Collier asked about any sleepers. I think I did that show last week. Um, Duval Jacks wondered if they should have taken Hutchinson. I ain't going there. And Brax asked about three questions, so I can't get to all of those. Kenneth Boyer asked about my reaction to the loss in Detroit last year. I don't know. I got to go back and, and look at it, man. I, I don't remember what I said or what I did. Um, the long arm of the law wants to know if Jaguars can have a top five offense this year. Sure, they can. So Pete Griff is why I asked why I did the first segment about who they were going to re-sign. Yeah, so all of those questions, man, all of those uh, great questions were sent um, just were sent by, by everybody. I wanted to give everybody a quick shout out, but Ventrell Miller, I think this year to be all about special teams. Uh, what we saw, I didn't really see enough of him at minicamp to really have an opinion one way or the other. And it's because they were in shorts, and I ain't going to lie to you. But um, Ventrell Miller will probably be better uh, in 2024 than he will be in 2023 because that's when I think he'll really get a shot in 2024 uh, to at least be in the rotation. Right now, I think it's special teams, or if he just goes into camp, and just blows camp up, then there's a chance it could be earlier than expected. So watch out for Ventrell Miller. I do know that his reputation 
I, I had talked to Brandon Olson of Locked On Gators. Make sure you check Locked On Gators out. I, I did ask Brandon about him. He said he was intelligent. He said he was just so smart. It was unbelievable. And he's not really a traits guy. Let me see what he's listed at. I think he's listed at six feet, 230, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Ventura, yep, six feet, 232 pounds. So we've seen in the past, Balky really, Trent Balky really go for tall, long, angular guys with these traits. The trait that he has, and it's worth a, a risk in the fourth round, is right there in his noggin. And um, everyone talks about how smart he is. Whether or not he's a three-down linebacker, I don't know, but he is a thumper and a bumper and a two-down uh, player. So put you in a little bit of a mindset of kind of what Philly did last year with their linebacker from Georgia. The kid they took, I think they took him in the third or fourth round, at, the Kobe Dean that everybody thought was going to be a, a top-10 pick. And um, so, yeah, that's that's my Ventrell Miller answer for the day. That's what I think will happen with Ventrell Miller. I really believe that um, Ventrell Miller will – be a guy that if he blows up in training camp, he'll, he'll make them make a decision on guys like Shaq Quarterman. He'll make them make a decision. He'll make them make a decision on not whether he's going to be the maybe the fourth linebacker, which uh, if they go to substitution. So let's just say they start Devin Lloyd and Foyo Lucan because they basically run a 4-2-5, right? Or they run – really they run a 3-4. Well, a three, four, four, but sometimes it looks like a four, two, five when they go to their passing down and they bring a nickel in. But if it's Oliver Kahn and Devin Lloyd, then it's Chad Muma and who? Is it going to be Ventra or is it going to be Shaq Quarterman? I think a lot might depend on special teams and how training camp goes and whether everybody's able to stay healthy. So there's my Ventra Miller update for the day. You guys. Make sure you hang in there every single day here on Locked on Jaguars. We'll bring you all of the stuff as we get closer and closer to training camp. Uh, we're going to try we, what we're going to try to do is get more guests this year because I love getting guests. But I more, more than anything, I love uh, telling you guys, answering your questions and giving you the podcast that I know you want to hear. But I will work on getting some guests. I had some big ones lined up last year. I ain't going to even tell you who they were. We just couldn't ever get our schedules lined up but we'll try to do a better job at it. But y'all know, y'all treat me like I'm the star, so that's why I do this every day without a problem, and I give it to you as raw as I can. I'll do it again tomorrow here on Locked on Jaguars. Y'all take care of each other and make sure what you do is what I always say, take care of each other. We'll see you for another edition of Locked on Jaguars. Shout out to my everydayers for tuning in.